Well, another year has gone by and I decided since I had my broken Baja that you can see in my last video of the summer that it was time to fix it. I figured an overhaul was in order and the first action to do since I was a kind of a loss where to start with it other than the frame was maybe I should stick with this body design that's sitting on the floor right here. So I guess we'll start with that. Uh, I ordered all my stuff from Dave's Motors and I ended up getting a little kit set up for this. I went for the uh, Proline Desert Rat Body for this car as well as the under tray for it. It's at home right now. I've not quite finished cutting it out and stuff because I ended up changing my mind and I went for the TSK B Class 1 body instead. Since I was initially going to go for the rat body design and I ended up buying it in its home, I'm not utilizing it, but I bought a lot of extra parts that I thought I would need for it and I can always build it at a later date if desired. Uh, some parts that I have that I won't be using on the build would be uh, the full forced windshield kit in orange. The RC mod modified pipes, these are stainless steel. They get cut into here. They get cut in right into here. And they make it so it's easy access of the top of the cage. So you don't have to necessarily pull it all apart. It's a quick release type thing. And it adds a bit of strength to it. I ended up buying this uh, TopCAD front bumper set. I have the matching one for the rear, it's quite heavy duty, but it looks like I won't be needing it at this point in time. I heavily damaged the skid plate on the bottom, so I went for the stock skid plate. This is for the bottom of the engine again. And I ended up using the old one anyways because it wasn't as bad as I thought. These are to protect your CV, uh, your axles in the back a little bit to keep from debris from going in there. I tore these right off the first year I had it and I never replaced it and sticks and, sticks and grass and everything else was going in there. So I thought I was going to put that in the kit, but it's not going to get used. And I had no idea what shape my bearings were in. So I went to uh, got some Boom Racing Baja bearing kit and it's complete. It has everything in it, but when I did my rebuild of my uh, Baja, I find none of my bearings were in order of replacement. I had my dominator pipe on the uh, back of the original Baja, and I had this cage on it, and when I was taking it apart, I noticed that it melted right here. That was from the pipe touching the plastic. It almost cut it in half. It took it halfway out. So I sort of abandoned the uh, dominator pipe theme and I went for an, a different exhaust altogether. This is my battered 49er shell that I made and it's quite durable and quite tough. And you can see the back of it's open here to allow for the dominator pipe theme to go on to it but since I was replacing the dominator pipe with a different style of pipe this shell was no longer of any use to me so I had to abandon this shell as well this is what I opted to go for the TSKB class 1 super tough polymer shell and um, the shell is made out of Lexon which is quite thick. I think it's about three millimeters. I had the option to buy this skin for eighty dollars and put it on, but it was just the skin. Uh, I find when you go over the rocks and sticks and tumbles and all that stuff, that skin would end up getting ripped off. So I decided to go old school method and paint mine. Well, this is the custom Baja that I made. And I don't think there's another ball held there exactly like this one. And as I went on with the build, I started with the 
uh, bottom of the chassis and then I decided I wanted to change the exhaust and then I decided I want to change the shell and it ended up turning into an overhaul. I said if I'm going that far I may as well strip it down to nothing and rebuild the whole car all over again and this is what it is. Stock, when you buy this Baja stock it comes in at 21.2 pounds uh, we put this baby on the scale and it's weighing in at a whopping 30.5 pounds. 30.5! The shell has three mounting points to take it off and it's relatively simple once you know where to do it. You've got two screws right here. They need to come out. Two screws hold it in from the brackets on the side and if we go to the bottom I have some uh, clips in here with the yellow tangs on it that are quick releases that pull out from the bottom and then the shell comes the whole cage comes off. These are the accessory parts for the uh, the cage kit and you're supposed to cut these out and they give you like almost like a template where you can make it for like the windows covers that they would have in the desert Baja and then you got another plate you can put on as well as some adapters screws tie wraps for this some extra clips and it comes with the manual that looks like this here it shows you how to cut out your windows and all the all that other good stuff and how to put it on and how to tie wrap it as well as your body panels and what screws go where everything is marked and on the other side it shows you how to put the rest of your paneling on like these pieces here as well as your screws and how to assemble it The TSKB Class 1 kit is uh, quite tough actually, quite tough. I was impressed with all the parts that it game, came with it, but you have to build it. It doesn't come like this, you have to, these all come like in like plastic tubs and this is Lexan. I find there's no way you can cut those out with scissors. I had to use a, a, die, a air die tool to cut it out and then use uh, exacto knife to trim the edges and just just to cut out the body that you see here with these panels it took me about three hours and then it's just uh, it comes in three pieces for the polymer cage and I gotta admit it is tough and it is also quite heavy for what it is and it's quite expensive for what it is if you want to, you can see how thick the polymer is here. And Alexon is the same type of uh, plastic that's used in riot shields for the police. The reason that they decided to use it for these RC cars is that it's tough, durable, and flexible. In other words, this is very hard to crack, dent, break, or puncture. It's, it's made quite well. If you want to compare how thick the polymer is to the old, the old one, you can see the difference right here. I would say it's twice as thick. This is the chassis here and this is what started the whole overhaul of the Baja that you see before you now. I was doing a jump with it at the gravel pit. I went a bit too high, came nose down because Bajas are prone to be nose heavy in stock form and they don't seem to jump very well. And when it landed, it landed really hard and on one wheel and this is what happened this is the result it snapped right here and from what my understanding is this is the nose piece here it's prone to cracking and breaking apparently it happens quite a bit and they've come up with a remedy to rectify that which I have that installed in my Baja right now uh, this is a Dark Souls front bumper it worked well for a while until I started hitting some rocks and stuff like that because in BC it's, there really is no desert to be riding your uh, RC in and there's rocks everywhere and trees and sticks and it was hitting everything under the sun you can see it got distorted and now it's lost its memory 
Every time I hit something now it bends back instantly. It needed to be replaced. In my hunt for a new chassis, uh, this is kind of basically a tub design. I wanted to get something solid so it had maximum strength. And I ended up going with the, the Scorpion chassis with the Scorpion matching skid plate. And the skid plate here reinforces the nose piece here. So now the thickness is twice as thick and there's no way that can break now. I decided to carry on and just leave the, this is the stock engine brace. It seems to work quite well so I just left it alone, it wasn't bent or anything. I just painted it black, left it nice. These are my RPM uh, control arms which are pl the durable plastic. They're about 30% tougher than regular polymer plastic. They take quite a beating and I can't seem to break them. So I put two in the front, two in the top. I did dye them with uh, RIT purple. but once they get they, they come white and then once they took all the abuse all the white was sticking out from underneath so I decided to go with the blue scheme that you see here and I painted everything blue my chassis was bent up so I kind of thought maybe that this uh, this front plate here which this is the stock plate I thought it was possibly bent so when I took it off and I trued it up and put a straight edge in it surprisingly it's not bent so I uh, managed to keep it and you can see the difference between how thick this one is to how thick this one is. This is turtle racing. This is the way to go. This is pretty heavy duty. So I decided if I'm going to make it heavy duty in the front, I'm going to make everything heavy duty in the front. I opted for a new servo on the front. I basically was running it all along with just the stock one. It seemed okay with the dirt, bust, the dirt Buster tires that were on it, but when I changed over to these uh, MX Hostiles here with the zero growth foams, I decided these are really going to bite in and I'm going to have to get myself uh, a different servo in it. So I opted for the Savex SV0236 MG high voltage 7.4 large scale uh, steering servo. And since I was going to beef up the servo and beef up the tires, you got to beef up everything. So then I opted to put in a Turtle Racing Billet Servo Saver, which is right here. The other one that came with it is this one right here. And it is stock. And it was basically wore right out and distorted. Uh, it's just made of plastic with a couple of bushings in it. I had to change the, uh, these are the tie rods. These are, they call this the turnbuckle design and you can see why it would be the next thing to go because these are just plastic with a little ball in it. I could see that being ripped right out through the servo and the tires in a, a hard grip situation. So I went for the turnbuckle design and you can see it's quite, quite beefy. There's no way you're going to break that. Uh, this is uh, used on old aircraft technology with the uh, even the bushings inside of it and everything is all steel and when you set this up and you put the screws in you got to make sure that it has some flex in it like this because if not you're going to snap the end off it's got to be able to flex like that the tires that come with the Baja stock are the dirt busters they're kind of like a sand rail tire in the front. They're okay if you're just using it for general bashing and stuff, but I found uh, the more I used it, and the more I used it, and the more I used it, the less effective it became gripping the ground when taking a corner. And I was just like, why is that? And when you grab the side of it on the dirt buster, you could actually, the tire would actually, the sidewall would fold over very easily just by pulling on it. And so I decided to take the tire apart and see what was going on in it. Well inside it's got the regular foam inside and all the stress from it going from end to end to end to end. The foam inside disintegrated about from about here to the end and it just fell apart. There was nothing left of it inside. So you basically had no support on the inside at all. That's the whole reason why I opted for uh, the knobby style tire that I have here with the zero growth uh, inserts inside 
because no matter how fast it goes, this tire will not balloon and the sidewalls on it are as stiff as can be. It should work like a dream now. Well, all my shocks needed to be rebuilt because uh, I lost a little bit of fluid out of each one. Uh, you should do it once a year, whether it's dirty or not, just to take any potential contamination out of it. And I decided to go for heavy duty springs or coils in it. Uh, the reason being is because this screw here, this is like your set screw, you can set up your tension for it. I had it uh, basically bottomed out in the front and the back because when I was just doing the smallest of jumps, it was bottoming out always, even with the right proper amount of fluid in it. And so uh, I think the, the coils were just too weak. I could have changed out the oil, but I just left it as stock what it's supposed to be. And so since this rig, I knew it was going to be a little bit more weight. I opted for the heavy duty shocks and I changed out the front and the back. You can see one's black and one's silver. I opted for the two different colors so I wouldn't mix them up. Not, not that you can anyways. And this is the front spring. You can see how thick it is. This is the stock. This is the heavy duty one. Hopefully you can see how much thicker it is. It should be a little bit thicker and it's a, a little bit longer and a little bit stiffer. 